Um, so the, the, the theme that he's been working on is this theme of Hadar. What is Hadar? What do you translate Hadar? Some sort of glory, some sort of a majesty, maybe. Hadar is the beauty of something, the majesty of something. I even mentioned that there was an, the initial version of Hatik, so it was called Hadar. Did I mention that last time? There was uh, the Hatikva that we ended up with. This is all about hope, all about the dream of 2,000 years. But the Hadar anthem, um, which was written by Jabotinsky, and I think Begin had advocated for it. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's it's actually about martyrdom and heroism. It's a different tone altogether. It's a different, like, you know, um, find the words for it. It's, or Jabotinsky's Jabberwocky comes up. It's from uh, Lewis Carroll. Uh, the Looking Glass, I think. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. So anyway, um, I don't have the uh, Hagar. Uh, it's called Sheer Betar. Betar is the city used for a city in Betar. Um, and here's the translation. Betar from the pit of decay and dust, blood and sweat will arise a generation. Proud, generous, and fierce. Captured Betar, Yodfat, Masada shall rise again in all their strength and glory. Adar, even in poverty, a Jew is a prince. Whether slave or tramp, you have been created the son of kings, crowned with the diadem of, of David. Whether in light or in darkness, always remember the crown, crown of pride and challenge. It's mm. powerful, right? But it's a totally different... Uh, that was the kickoff? That was, that, was that was the push that Begin had put up. That was the national anthem. Um, and it was composed by Zeb Jabotinsky. Instead, he gave him a street. Okay, so um, Hadar Shanel Amidoreno, the lost Hadar. And so Hadar is sort of that pride, that sense of Jewish confidence and Jewish resilience. He's born in the Atbim, the Vama Hishtana Doreno Biafa Sadarot Kut. Why is our generation so different from the previous generations? Avishlita. So Avishlita, who Yehud the tzaddik, he was a tzaddik. Begil Shalosh, who atafo tibitalis, he wrapped me up in talis. Avi Avi Ani, the Talmud Torah brought me to Cheder. Bechal who gidol chinuch otano hetev the Torah biyot I mean, he raised us well. Life of Torah and biyot shemayim. Gavah pikein the veteno dibarno the safa anglit. Yet we spoke English in our house. Bechal dorot there. They, uh, a child who is five years old goes, I say, Polish or Rusit. It wouldn't happen. There was never a generation that would happen. Yes, for a while it was either Yiddish or Ladino or it's Hebrew. Right? That was it. You added, you spoke Jewish. Yiddish meant Jewish. And Ladino is, is basically Jewish for Spanish speakers. And I want to ask my my uh my father-in-law if he knew Polish. And he said to me, Lo, but why would I know Polish? Right? Did your grandfather know Polish or no? He said no. Why would anyone speak Polish? Right. right. So that idea that, that there's no way you would speak the vernacular. Uh, by the way, you know who started this? German Jews, the first ones to speak regular language, German language, as opposed to Yiddish. It's in the time of um, <clears throat> of, of Hirsch and even his predecessors. So, you know, Hirsch, Hildesheimer, and, um, <clears throat> and his Rebbe, their Rebbe, who was known as Chacham Isaac Bernays, Ashkenazi, but he took the name Chacham because he thought that no one gave color to rabbis, so he chose not a Sephardic uh, title. And he was the first one to deliver a sermon the secular language, and he instituted giving sermons every Once upon a time, rabbis spoke twice a year. Right? Yeah. And he instituted Yes, so uh, so he that that's the that's the madrash that they still obviously he he spoke many languages he was a diplomat but at 
at home, the kids spoke Lashana Kodesh, yeah. When was Yiddish Because I know it was like a mixture of German and English. Yeah. But the point is, it was his own, it was his own cultural life. Like, he's not talking about anything sacred. Yiddish is not sacred. If he says it's sacred, I'll disagree with him. Yiddish is sacred only because it's it's about the exclusivity and the and the um, closed nature of the Jewish people as its own cultural um, group. Uh, we developed throughout the years, maybe hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, I'm not, not sure exactly when. Ein ze ela prat katan bevada. Avrechim yere shamayim yodim harbe safot. There are young men who know many languages. Harbe vat yodim. Dim sum komene magazinim. There are many different types of accents, I think it is. Or? Oh. Maybe means magazines. Okay. So, so right. So Kanal Hadar Hayofi Shil Am Israel, the the inner majesty of Am Israel. So one of the um, one of the expressions, the outward expressions of tchunot of of the Jews is joy. I heard once in the name of, of a Gentile mumcha l'safot who is an expert in languages. Right? You know the whole thing, like every language has many expressions of whatever is mm. common in that, uh, right? So we have, that's what they say, that's what they say. I don't know, it's true, but there's a lot of, yeah. So Jews have a lot for like indigestion. There are many expressions. Simcha, gila, rina, ditza, chedva, right? Be'ava, why? Why do we have all this? In Shekol, Uma, Sham, uh, Sama Dagash, every nation places an emphasis on Dvarm Shem Iker Chaim Shalom, on parts, things that are important to its culture, to its life. Do you have a Safa? Oh, they're saying the Exmo, the Eskimo, the Mishnah. Sheish, Hosheva, Milim, near Duffel, the Shelag, maybe they're different. There are seven or eight words, six or seven words for snow. Anglit, Yesh, Rach, Milachat, that expresses snow. No. The Chaim Belashan, well, we have frost, we have ice. Right, okay. There is no there's no other word, right? But, right. But Eskimos have many. I, again, I don't really know if this is true, but this is what they say. The, the point is true whether whether it's true or not. Dry snow, is moist snow, is cold snow. We don't even have snow. We very rarely use the word shelik. There is a we have lotira uh right? We have She doesn't fear her house from snow. That's certainly a biblical word. That's in Mishle. Then we have the Gemara about Hillel, who is sitting in on the sky, right, the mm-hmm. skylight, trying to trying to be part of the base medrash that he didn't have financial means to access, and he's listening in. It was in the middle of the snowy months, it snowed a lot, and he was frosted over. Uh, Hillel was frozen between the skylight and snow, and they they thawed him out. And they found Encino Man. They dug him out. And there, there's Hillel. Yeah, he met his rebellion. He met uh, the two great converts named Shmaya Vatayon, Hill's rebellion. The story of, of the beginning of, of who Hill was. The point is, we don't really have many mentions of snow in Chazal. That's the one I can remember. Maybe there's one other. And we have very few mentions in Tanakh. It's not a culture where they would they were around snow off. Um, um, and we have, like, if your sins are white as snow, are, 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 are like red, like scarlet, they become white as snow, that kind of thing. They live with joy. Simcha is an essential component of their lives. And therefore, in Judaism, we have many words to express joy. Why don't we recognize this? We're all sad. 
problems and sadness. I always, I was just saying so. I want to be that person who is always like happy, always laughing, always. There are people like that. I really am trying so hard to be that person. Like, I, so hard. Like, if you give up what? Sad energy? Oh, it's, it's all an act. It's all an act. I'm going to go home and wear my goth clothing and my, uh, yeah, my uh, eyes black. And No, uh, I, I feel like the weight of responsibility of life, family, of Jewish history, it's, it's an awesome burden. And sometimes I feel like it just gets us down. It's hard. And it's true when you're teaching, you have to like put on a show, but it's mindfulness. You know, you have to really be, I, I feel like you really work very hard to be this simple. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. For some people who are introverts, when you go to a kiddish, they come home exhausted. They've just worked muscles they don't even know exist. Yeah. They walk out there. So I, had, I had some kind of people. It was like the people I, they were eating their their children. It was such a burden. I had to say hi to them, make room for other people. Some people are really exhausted afterwards. Introverts have had to do for years. Driving. What's interesting is if you go, they used to have all these house kiddishes, like you're a mafia and you had money, but like house and things. Different communities, whether it's in Woodmere or Teaneck, and a few here. And people do it all the time. Right. So so but for for introverts, right? So things shifted during after COVID and all of a sudden it became all right just to be with have like two friends. And it wasn't like a problem. And so it became socially acceptable. And and all of a sudden people who are used to being in life the party did they had to reinvent themselves. Yeah. So like for me, I, I've learned to gain a lot of meaning. I don't know if I'm an out actually, really don't know. I get a lot of meaning out of one on one. I never one on one. I used to not. Um, I used to be like, okay, setting this, you know, let me, and it, and and at some point it became too much. You kind of have to, like, you can't just like be on your own. You have to a little bit change. Right. 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 No, no, no. I understand, or it's the expectation. But you, you do it. You, you carve your own line of work out of whatever you're good at, and you do it your own way. In the end of the day, they respect that. They won't. But. Um, I, I, I just think I see people shifting from um, this external type of outlet, like like we, everyone needs to be a, po- a life of party. That's the goal. Popularity and what is expected is changing. It really is. And it's true. It's reflected in the entertainment that people are choosing. It's reflected in the kinds of things people do in their leisure time. So, yeah. I think it just changed. I think it made it okay to be alone. And and And, and people are okay now. They don't have the anxiety, social anxieties. They won't stay because they don't have to do it. Just an observation. I don't know if it's true. Um, but what he's saying is that why if we are a religion that is so um, suffused with joy and, and it's such a theme of our religion, of our of our lives, why are people walking around like, oh, if it, do sometimes people around like, three more oh, minion. Oh, God. Oh man, this is a, you know it's like like, it's a, like everything is such a such a slap and everything's such a so there is that impression we get. And in fact, there's a whole genre of like Jewish humor that's all about like the kvetching. Oh, 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 the whole Harry David, the whole right, the whole um before him, what's his name? No, before yeah, him. Jackie Mason, mm-hmm. the, the, the whiny guy. No, okay. Anyway, im im chama minimally, but a lot of Jewish humor is all about kvetching. The only meat, Sular Hov, the Tiruta Praeta Karachim. He's in Jewish. Karachim should soak him the cold. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. He cries for it. It's like his name is Schwartz. Look, Mikan Tedu Ma Kora et Slam Bipanit Bifnim. Look at the Parachim, the groups that are laughing aloud. What's happening inside? Shays Yelen, Tuba America, Lot Sachku, Kolkach, the cold. There was no like like outer laughter or people like like screaming laughter. Hayom the full makom shalom roim yeladim tzokim bechol kocham map sharosh tzok zeh. Why do we find this outward laughter? Um, I, I think you know sometimes you'll you'll hear like someone just cracking up in the middle of a group. So what is going on? So this question when I I never saw growing up people just like bursting out in laughter. 
This question, my son asked me, I went to the city center. Um, and we went there to, um, uh, uh, to, to purchase shoes. The Hamerkaz Sham, who Chiloni, mostly it was not religious. She got a Yanu who Shaloti. He asked me, and he was a little something late. Why is everyone laughing? It's funny, we're watching videos of of the Shira choir, which is like the Lemmer Brothers. Well, it was originally Shom Lemmer and his brother, uh, Yanki Lemmer, and others, but there's incredible Hasidic voices, and they have these beautiful stuff. You can watch the videos and videos of their music. It's, it's out of this world. They're always sitting around a table at a tish singing and like they break out a spontaneous song. So my shalom asked me, why are these guys always eating? I said, I see them. They sit and eat the drink. Anyway, I'm Marty Lowe. My name is Shehem Kolka Hatsuvim. They're sad. Hatsuv Lahem Bifnim. They're sad inside. Therefore, they need to laugh on the outside. In the Chapsim, call Yom Sipuk Hana and Mivim Lusim Chavitz Chok Lomasigin. They're looking for external sources of joy, whether it's alcohol or whether it's, uh, you know, Entertainment, and whether it's you know um, picking on each other, you know those, those sorts of things. People are looking for external manifestations of joy because internally they're sad. Nishmas Adam mitiva Every soul is thirsty naturally for something. law. When when you're missing that which you're thirsty for, what do you do? Right, you go looking for it. Hinasis ravot. I'm hungry, and then sad. Sadness means you're you're empty, right? We have to not look in the refrigerator. Like, what am I missing? But look, right? You always open the fridge. And say, well, where is it? What are in the fridge? Someone didn't go shopping. How how we live with real joy? And and the hundred just pleasure we have from Yadus. You ever go away on a vacation? It's like so harried. You come back, you're like, ah, I'm home. And where is that from? Like, why are you having you, you couldn't wait to get out of home? But I think you realize that like you like your existence, you like your life, you like that. It's it's nice. Change of pace is fantastic. But I think that that's part of it. And or when something's going on, and then that 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 event sort of calms down for a little bit. It's just, just being present, not doing anything. You're not on a roller coaster. You're just on a Shavatone. It's just okay. Being is also source of happiness. If you have inner peace, and honestly, as a Jew, what you long for, you pine for the most, is fulfilling the Torah, doing the mitzvahs, and a connection with Hashem. If you have that, you have everything. I was talking to someone who, you know, they lost a lot. There's, you know, certain certain losses in the family and finance, finances and things like that. And I said, well, what are you going to do that? I'm going to focus inward. I'm going to focus on family and focus on my relationship with Hashem. And he sounded so calm compared to a person who was so worried about all these other things that didn't exist before. Him. And I think sometimes that that, 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 that that is the real source of joy. If you zero in on that, if you make the time for that, you'll find a lot of simcha in your life. Okay, so anyway, this idea is a true idea. That the Jew has a natural joy, a natural hadar. So what does that mean? Sorry. The neighbor and the neighbor of your father do not add it. Without a joy, we lack that. Tigvosehem uh, Shalanashi. Um, is this a uh, aspirations? Um, no, not it's not quite there. Uh, it's the lack of joy, right? And um, oh yeah, I guess it is. He said, he said, the lack of joy and the fact that we are satiated and find joy in Avodah Hashem, right, um, is not as prevalent today. And it's recognized when you look at what people are doing with their time and their and their and their their longings, right? So, there are two types of mitzvahs. We have mitzvahs that are between the Hashem, between man and and his fellow, in Adam Chaver, as we call them, right. 
you have not charging ribis, you have um, um, you have uh, Rashav Zavedo, tons of mitzvahs between us and our fellow man. Mitzvahs should be in Adam Malakom and the mitzvahs between us and Hashem. In Adam Machavero, Pirshu Lios Adam Tov, Samechat Shein to make the other person happy. Kaim mitzvahs, Hatech Kamocha, Fagal the Batora. Between Adam, Lamakom and mitzvahs between us and Hashem, Pirshu Shachayim Lomo Torah. Yeah, we're chayev to study Torah and to daven, right? It's very simple. We have relations with Hashem. We do mitzvos, uh in the realm of Torah and Tila and other mitzvos that He asks us to do that we don't get any credit with other people for. In a gedarshan, a dorish rabot with nitzibor, a gedarshan who speaks publicly before the congregation, samti leiv tofa manyanet. I'm at the right, so I pay attention to this. This phenomenon. When I speak about matters that pertain to relationships between man and fellow man, like getting along with your spouse, to think about other people, every detail, every, the more I lengthen the discussion, they want, more to, they want to hear about those things. Human interest stuff. Everyone wants to hear the pop psychologist speak, right? Everyone wants to hear the thought. And they smile. Um, and then whether they're religious or not religious. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. That those topics really talk to people. Mm-hmm. It didn't occur to me when I was darshing that I was talking about matters that are Adam Khabero. Oh, all right, all right. Then I'm speaking with it. And someone comes to me and says, "He exempta ma tarotze mechayim shli." You've exaggerated now. Saying it's not a magazine. <laughs> yeah, people take it very personal. Take it very personally, and they they they, as Yisrael Salanter once pointed out, that when he gave a muscle, someone said to him, "Why are your parables? They really hit." He hit me like a dagger. So he said, how do you know to describe me with your, your imagery and your parables? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I You think I shoot an arrow and it hits the target. I draw. I, I shoot an arrow and then I draw the target around it. That's that's the way he, he proposes his muscles. So right, he knows exactly what he wants to do with it already. So the point is, this guy says, yeah, you went too far. It always happens that people people feel personally personally uh, invested and they feel that they're they're affected by it and they're and they're emotional by it about it. Oh, okay. All right. So let's let's see. Sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, so Od Lo Karali, sorry, Shemasati Dirojalan Yanam Shiben Al Machabero, and someone comes to me and says, Oh. You're, you've been too extreme. They usually you're spot on, Rabbi. And that's why the the Rosh so Hashanah is perfect for that, right? It's always it's always on target. Okay, so so the heroes don't say too many chumras. Came you early. If you're not from enough for a certain crowd, you have a problem. And if you're too from, you have a certain problem. Came you early. Adoni ze lo matim lechinuch. This is not appropriate for our education. He savor atashe gad she gidan lo be'me'asharim. You think we were raised in me'asharim? It's amazing this idea that that it's that that when people are being charged with a uh, with a mission to serve Hashem, it's like. Either not enough, or it's either not from enough or too from, right? That's usually it. And that's a generalization. But it's true. It is true. I, I cannot speak about like the importance of Talmud or the importance of minion without someone being critical from both sides, saying, you, know, you can go hard enough. It's more important than you. Someone saying, Rabbi, you have families. This is so easy. It's not so easy. Get out there. Extreme rhetoric. You know, it's like there's always a very, like, it's it's almost like, and I thought it was from a psychological perspective. We feel like being judged in the eyes of Hashem. We're not good enough. We haven't met the grade. We haven't kept the standard. But he, he's saying something else here. 
Mevin et atzorich liot ben adam ba'al midos. Everyone understands practically, you have to get along with your fellow man. These are the universal laws of man. These are the codes that Hammurabi developed. You have to be a good citizen. And they, they predate the Torah. There are laws in society that predate the Torah about not stealing and murdering. Right? It's almost like ingrained in us that there's something wrong with taking someone else's property, your own possessions, your own. This. I always say it's the same Torah that tells you to, to uh, put an Eruv, right? Or that you can't carry outside of Shabbos. It's the same Torah that tells you not to steal. But, but for a lot of people, the second one is more logical. First one's not logical at all. Kind, kind, yeah. Intuitively, he understood. Right. He understood intuitively that he had, he had sinned. Right. But there, that's the reason that people get upset about it. But why don't you feel guilty if someone gave you Musa about and you Musa about like how to be a better spouse? Right, but but uh, look, I'm not I'm not perfect with the Rachel's better, more kavana, I could dive in better. I could well, a lot of things, a million things I could improve. Learn with greater asmada, I could waste less time. But when someone, if someone was to um, to criticize my religious performance with God, I'd be more defensive. If someone said to me, "Look, you know, you got to be a better parent," I would feel the pain, but I would accept the musr more readily. Mm -hmm. So the question is, right? In other words, like I feel judged. I feel I feel I'm not making it. I'm not meeting my standard or expectation, but I'm willing to receive it. I'm willing to give it sense. So coming back to the question is why is there a difference? Why is there a difference? Right. I think intuitively, he's what he's suggesting is we know in you know, Amma is sort of what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Like we have that moral part, that part of the Torah is sort of ingrained in us. But it's less ingrained that you, you know, that, that, that you that you have to do egg rufa. Like if the dead body is found, crack the neck of the calf and declare the nachal nachal time, never cultivate any crops there. And once or the gift to tovel your dishes, it's, you know, like you feel inherently, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I should be told my dishes. You may hear it in a share and think you'll do it, but then you put it aside. So, okay, so let's see. So Komar, Kolcha Afibu Chiloni understands Benam Nachavero, Midas Tobos. To be more strong in your observance. That's in heaven. It's not our that's not who we are. That's not realistic for our world. Zutos. It's a mistake. Everyone knows that. In Shabbos, Rashi says, Super Shugo Echad, Higil Hilaza came to Amarlo. Shehu wrote to Lomod Kotor al Regalach. So let's learn the whole Torah on one leg. Lo Hilasil said, Alach, Sani, the Kaverch Lo Tabi. That which is hated to you, don't do to your friend, which is the corollary of Vatalech Kamocha. Don't do things that are hated to you, to your friend. Zui Kolator Kol. Vidach, and the rest, Perush is the Perush. Zil Gamar, go and learn. Says Rashi, the Alach, Sani, the Kaverch Lo Tabi. That which is hated to you, don't do to your friend. Reacha. Your friend and the friend of your father do not abandon. That's in Mishlei. Mm -hmm. That's a Kodesh Baruch God's friend. Al ta'avor al dvarav. Don't violate his words. Shere alecha sanui shi'avor chavercha al dvarecha. Because you hate that your friend should violate your words. Chavercha kavanah shemitah. We don't like when God doesn't pay attention to us, right? So therefore, don't do harm to his chaver. The relationship we have with our fellow man, Hashem Yisparach, you know, philosophia, is not a philosopher, who is shiot reality. He relates to us like a real, like real with real personality. Mm -hmm. We have to relate to him as if it was a person. He hears everything. 
and he's happier in pain for us when we're sad. If you do a mitzvah, warms him up, butters him up. Right, butters him up. Yeah. yeah. It's like saying, uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 creating the opposite. So he's suggesting that we have to understand that Chazal depicted Hashem as if he's our chaver. We understand that we would never intuitively do anything to hurt our fellow fellow man. We have to love our fellow man. And we have to treat them with respect. Those are basic human laws that are ingrained in us. Why don't we appreciate? That the mitzvahs been on the Malkam the Torah are also uh, incumbent upon us, are required of us. The same, why don't we react the same way to a drush about that mitzvahs been on the, the Malkam? Because we don't appreciate the Kosh Baruch Hu is, is our Reach, as our Chaver. And, and if we can sort of create that reality, we have no problem with it. So he's a, it's a very creative way of dealing with this problem. It's not, well, you should care more about being on the Malkam. It's, you should, it's because you don't see Hashem as in your life, like a, like a person is. And if you saw Hashem as a present partner in your life, then all these mitzvahs would make perfect sense. And it would be so intuitive. And you wouldn't be like, oh, God, this, eh, I'll go three days, three, I'll wear it one time without checking for John. Then I'll do it afterwards. You would never do that. You would never like, I'll borrow the car from the car dealership. If I like it, I'll buy it. You wouldn't do that. Some people used to buy dresses. Egg, I think you see it. You see it. And they say, oh, I'll return it. And I don't like the way, I don't like the way I sweated it. Um, either does the owners. Okay. Um, so, so, but, but, but the point is, you wouldn't do that, right? Because it's wrong. So, if it's if it's wrong to do that, because you view that human being as alive in your life, in real, something to contend with and deal with the feelings of pain, feelings of guilt, the ramifications of what happens if I do that to them, and do I get in trouble, and do I will I pay a penalty, will I owe money? We don't have that relationship with Shem. So, you know, the relationship with Shem, all those mitzvahs are like your radical model. Well, let me tell you about a bunch of mitzvahs that don't really matter to you. Right. Right. So we we don't so that we're not going to solve that problem right away. We don't see the hidden dimension. We don't see God. We don't see what happens when we do that. Right. We don't, Chazal talk about creating good good angels and bad angels. We don't see this happen. I don't believe, but but that God is in pain when we do sin. God is rejoicing when we, that's, that's, that's an incredible feeling, incredible notion. Yeah. Um, and it's helpful, I think. It's helpful in, in terms of the imagining. Okay. Um, I'll stop here um, and we'll continue next time. Just, just take a look at where we're headed. Safer actually doesn't have that much left to get to the back section. Back section is its own, it looks like its own set of essays, but basically it's up to here. And then there's a whole thing called Mamre His Oros, which is you have articles on different topics like Shnai Mechor, Targum, which is a Mitzvah Javis, Zachar Shomer, Yurin Ava. So we can look at that. We can look at those later on, but those are little one time articles. Nice. Uh, powerful. Powerful. Mm-hmm. All right, bye. I, I rose on here. Okay. Oh,